What are you getting exactly for your money's worth? In this video I'm gonna look at quality differences when it comes to bearings. I'm gonna look at made in China bearing, made in China bearing and premium brand Japanese bearing, the quality differences among these three. We're gonna go from worst to better to best solutions. I'm gonna focus on the design features of the seals. The leading cause of bearing failure is the failure of the seal. Before a bearing seizes or fails, its seal fails first. It might be improperly sized, as in this case, improperly fitting, as in both of these cases, causing dirt and contaminants to enter the, in, the space inside the bearing. They soak up the lubricants inside, causing a relative lubricant starvation, where the lubricant can get to the rolling surfaces of the contact elements inside the bearing, where the lubricant should be, as well as the excess particles that swirl around in there will abrade the contact surfaces as well, causing pitting as well. So, on top of it, the contaminants and the water that gets into it will make a bearing fail in no time, but on account of the seal being poorly designed in the first place or failing over time. So I'm going to use close-ups. We're going to go from worst to better to best. And these close-ups will need a little bit of fiddling, so give me some generous space here with this. The first brand here is looking like this, Amcan, making it look like it has something to do with America, but nothing whatsoever. This is a through and through made in China bearing and is the worst of the three. The bearing itself is not even branded. It doesn't say MCAN or China or nothing on it whatsoever. They just hide in shame, I might add. So the first feature I want to point out is that you can see the rolling elements inside the cage or the bearing balls. You can see sun shining through it there. So this is an improperly sized seal that's not even covering the rolling elements. Okay, so that's observation number one. Observation number two relates to how the... and I removed the second seal. It used to come with two seals, of course. So. Take a look at how the bearings outer ring and inner ring are designed to accommodate a seal here. There is a lip here at the edge of the bearing and it is square, meaning from the edge of the bearing here it just goes down vertically and it comes out horizontally and that's it. So it's just a it's just like a stair with a mini step on it. Okay. On the inner ring there is no such surface, so this is just called a shoulder. Okay, it's just a plain shoulder machined in there. On the inner ring here there's no such surface, so the seal doesn't have any other way of interacting with the surface of the inner ring other than other than being close to it. So that's basically the best this seal can hope for. You can see the sun shining through there. I hope this makes sense. This seal does not come into contact with the inner ring of this bearing. Okay? So that's how this is manufactured. This is not gonna last for any significant amount of time in, in, a, in an environment where contamination is a concern. This comes out, by the way, from a bicycle's bottom bracket, this one and this one. A bottom bracket is, you know, where you pedal, so this is closest to the ground. This one comes out from a motor, uh, from a treadmill, completely different, but it's a good seal story. So, I want to point out, besides the features on the bearing in the metal, features of the seal itself. because the outer edge of the seal needs to make physical contact with the 
inner edge of the outer ring here the this would be the inner edge of the outer ring there on the shoulder some generous amount of flexible rubber would be nice to be there there is definitely some here the seals are metal backed in all cases so this is how the seal looks like in all cases meaning all three bearings have metal backed rubber seals and this rubber is NBR a type of rubber synthetic rubber that's resistant to uh, petroleum based greases so this is the extra rubber here on the outside that interacts with that shoulder I hope that makes sense and on the inside edge of the seal here which is like I said improperly sized you can see there's a little bit of thickening here of the rubber but uh, which means that there was some goodwill there to provide or manufacture a seal that might actually work or looks good on paper but because this is not making contact with the inner ring all of the goodwill that goes into the inner design or the, the design of the inner edge of the seal remains wishful thinking okay so that's how the inner edge looks like it looks reasonable but it just doesn't work this is fail this failed as new without being installed anywhere a better solution is another made in China bearing visible here and it's branded as Sunhill bearing looking like so look at the immediate difference the generous inside rubber lip that is really pliable soft rubber on the inside lip on the seal there is some rubbery edge along the outside to some degree this provides a good fit towards the same square shoulder here to the outside ring and at the inside ring we have the same design no shoulder cut into this inside ring whatsoever but this seal is sized properly at least and this generous rubber lip here on the inside edge allows a proper fit to actually hold out contaminants that's how it looks when it when it fits you can see this inner lip interacting with the inner ring when it's pressed in place like so it is actually going to fit properly although a little weak here along the outside but it's positively sealing on the inside this bearing failed because it was only sealed on one side and was installed in a bicycle bottom bracket so close to the ground that the contaminants got in from the outside so this is how a better seal is designed that is sized properly and if I can show you one last detail about how the inner edge of the seal looks like you can see that it has a V groove design to it so lowest here in the middle and has a higher lip coming up towards one side as well as to the other okay I hope this makes sense higher higher here lower in the middle higher here holding or retaining here some lubricant that helps keep water out from this bearing from this one side where this seal was installed so this is a really nice design actually in terms of seal geometry the best design is on this premium bearing not the same size but it's easier to see the design in the metal outer ring here is such that this isn't just a square shoulder this is actual a step here or a lip is being manufactured here meaning that the edge here doesn't just come down straight there is a 
pocket here, there where the tip of the tweezer, tweezers ran in, and the edge of the seal is sitting in this pocket, held in place firmly by this little lip here. Okay, so I hope this makes sense. This is not just a step. This is not just a shoulder. There is this positive lip here that's holding the outer edge of the seal in place. The same stepped or lip design is visible here on the inner ring. You can see that this is not just a square shoulder again. There is this lip that I'm grabbing with my tweezers that holds the seal firmly in place, providing a really positive geometric interaction between seal and inner ring. And of course, how the seal fits is also industry exemplary. Look at the design here, how well formed this is the same V groove design as on the Sun Hill bearing inner uh, surface of the seal. So deeper in the middle here, higher at the outer edges left and right, meaning that there is space here for lubricant to be retained and that lubricant will keep water and contaminants out. On the outer edge of the seal, the seal is just rounded, but this rounded rubber amount here is generous and is soft or pliable or is compressible and how it interacts with the grooves is this. So I'm compressing the outer edge and tucking it on. It needs a little bit of lubricant. I'm trying to tuck it under as well as you can see the inner edge going over here jumping over the ridge thereabouts so this is this is how it looks like when it's in place it needs a little lubricant to be properly placed so here you can see this is how it's interacting with this lip here on the bearing. Now the edge of the seal is behind this lip here and it's not yet. It's making the transition here at this point. Okay, so this is how seal is properly designed, is properly fitted. This is what you're getting from a premium brand. So, worst, better, best these are the differences in seal designs. If you're considering getting cheap bearings that are meant to work in a contaminated environment and need seals to do that job, you might want to consider moving towards, as your budget allows, towards bearings that are of premium brand. You are getting what you pay for. Thank you very much for watching.